Season 4, Episode 2, The Company We Creep. Quiet down, wizards. Our special guest has arrived. Welcome to the Hype Tower. This is caretaker Benita Von Wingenkamp, and she's here to do a collab with us. Thanks, Mystic Mike. I'm so touched you invited me to your new creator studio thing. What did you say this was called? Hype Hype Tower. Tower! The Hype Tower, thank you. I'm looking forward to our collab. Every wizard who dwells in the Hype Tower is a titan of their respective content niches. Oh, okay, well, that's nice. That is the Sensivra and Domrilican. Hello. They do couple pranks, and that's Diblith, Griblith, and Miblith. They're triplets, and they do videos where they take turns dancing in a line one by one. Hello. It is great to meet you all. All right. Now, Sensivra... Do you want to teach Benita a dance? Oh, wow. I am really not good at dancing, so if we could just do some... Here's the tune. Roll, roll, sap, no cap, spell, slapping. Roll in my whip, all drip, zip, zipping. See, thou gesture to thy robe, then waggle thy fingers like no, 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 then conjuring fingers before the face. Okay. Like... Like this? Somewhat. Uh... Then, roll in my whip, or drip, zip zipping, pantomime to ride a broom, gesture to thy medallions, and pretend to zip up thy wizard robe. Thou canst practice it on thy own before we filmist it. Yeah, I-, I will definitely need to. Robes full of zap, no crap. Hang on. Robes full of zap. Uh, uh, Take a run, Wingen Camp. Before we proceed, I have a matter of the utmost importance that we must attend to. More important than this weirdly difficult dance? Before we proceed, you must agree to signeth this magically binding non-disclosure agreement. For you have been exposed to trade secrets in the Hype Tower. Uh, you want me to sign a magically binding NDA? Yes. For you must never reveal the secret of Hype Tower, which is that the Hype Tower is merely a green screen background in one of the library's new creator studios. Well, I'm not going to tell anybody that. Okay, I probably would have told everybody that, but if you don't want me to, I won't. This magical document requires a signature attesting to that fact, and further, that if you break the non-disclosure agreement, you agree to be fed to the Kraken. Sign here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Being fed to the Kraken? Get out of town. I'm not signing that. Do you even have a Kraken anywhere? Where are y'all keeping a Kraken? This is insane. Oh, 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 we got you. Hi, <laughs> You did it. We just filmed our collab. We did? Yes, I'm uploading it right now. POV, you're pranking the town caretaker by threatening death by Kraken. Ugh. Y'all in Cattle Holler. Cattle <laughs> Holler, Cattle Holler. Cattle 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 Holler, Cattle Holler. Welcome to, welcome to Bootyful, Bootyful, Spooky Cool, Spooky Cool, Kurtle Holler. Kurtle Holler, Kurtle Holler. Baby, Kurtle Holler, Kurtle Holler. Kurtle Holler, Kurtle Holler. Okay, Chill. What's the situation? Albert, Mr. Thorne, Julie, we are in the land of the proud rock people. You may have guessed as much by all the rock people tumbling around here. They rule miles of land on either side of the river. 
And what do they say about the bridge? Will they let us across? Well, they're debating. Some of them have never met a ghost, a talking tree, or an invisible man, and they don't love that we're on the run from elsewhere council agents. Do they know our souls are at stake? Yes, I told them all about it, and then I showed them a magic trick to seal the deal, and the reaction was mixed. We must cross that bridge if we want to avoid agents on the main road. Attention, travelers! Here comes their messenger. Our quorum has reached a verdict. The tree Willifred Thorne may pass over the gemstone bridge as he is of nature. Okay, and? However, those with feet and those who float must first complete a quest of friendship. Our specialty, Albert. We'd like to hear more about this quest of friendship. Our quest is thus. Retrieve a sacred crystal from the cave of the evil robot, Sassafax. Then bring the crystal here, to its rightful place among the stones. What do you say, gang? If we want to cross the river, we might not have a choice. Of course we're going to do the quest of friendship. Are you kidding me? If we're back fast enough, we might even get a kiss from the beautiful Chalcedonia, fair queen of the rock people. Go and find the crystal. I'll wait for you on the other side of the bridge and commune with the flora of the land. Very well, Mr. Thorne. We'll see you soon. I await your return. Dear Rock People, we graciously accept your quest and will return with one sacred crystal. Steady, chill. Maybe two. Come on, Julie. Albert, I feel like we're lost, but I don't know how. We followed the directions exactly as they were given. The rock people said the cave was 50 tumbles north and that we'll hear the crystal when it's close by. I guess we should have asked how big a rock they used to measure distance. All I know is I'm starving, and we should have already ate our breakfasts. Well, Julie agrees. So why don't we stop here for a quick snack? Okay, the bad news is I found more health bars, so we have plenty of those if we get desperate. Do you have any more cereal? We got Honey Wisp, Bloody Smacks, Shredded Feet. I know what you're going to say. That one sounds terrible, and it is. But if you take a sugar pack, or three is how many I like, I'll let you decide. It's up to you. But I think you'll find a certain... Chip, do you notice anything unusual about this place? Uh, in what way? Look closer at the trees. Oh my god! Why are there hundreds of creepy dolls... Hanging from the trees! I don't know, Chip, but (laughs) that one's looking at you. She's looking at you, Albert Ghost! We're both mistaken. She has no eyeballs. Oh my god. Each one's more horrible than the last. Especially the redhead ones. I'm not a fan of the porcelain myself. But, like... How did they get here? They couldn't have got here by themselves. Someone over a long time must have very carefully taken every- Ah! Troll! Name is Alfonso. Been a long time since I had a guest. For those of you who have never beheld the Abacus of Fate, it is a wondrous machine. Its beads move freely enough that one can play a spirited game of Connect Four with them. Oh, hey, look, Venus. It's true. Do you want to play? Yeah, me neither. Okay, 
Unless the abacus is in new citizen mode or graduation mode. Okay, uh, can't confirm that since it's not working. Then its beads cannot be moved by any means other than the cosmic wiles of the Elsewhere Council. Okay, then it's one of those weird passages he wrote in old Halloween-ish. Miss Von Wingenkamp, may I disturb your work ever so briefly to ask a gnawing question? Sure, Rochester. I'm just reading Roostifer Batsinger's long-lost confession diary to my desk plant. As one does. Yes, as one does. So, what is your gnawing question? Ooh, I could be gnawing something. Where is my stupid box of cruddy, crumbly health bars? Why am I always so hungry? Well, Benita, I believe it is because you become wrapped up in a problem and forget to eat proper meals. Oh yeah, that would be it, women. Uh, anyway, your question. I wanted to inquire about this basket that you left beside the boutique cash register. Since yesterday, it has rapidly filled with dozens of beads of innumerable design. Oh, I, uh, put out a town bulletin asking people to bring me any weird beads that they have lying around. And are you bedazzling a shroud? Why ever do you need beads? Well, I was kind of hoping that somebody just happens to have the bead that's missing from the Abacus of Fate. Like, in their house somewhere? Or crypt? Or troll cave? Of course. The missing bead that Roostifer Batsinger pried from the abacus many years ago. Well, am I to assume that this missing bead resembles the other beads on the abacus? Yes, so it would be about yay big, and they're all 20-sided. Some of them have little letters, some of them have numbers, and some of the beads have little pictograms. I can assure you, Madam Caretaker, that none of the beads in this basket remotely resembles a bead from the abacus of fate. It seems that in their eagerness to help, the town's monsters have perhaps not followed directions. Yeah, judging by all the perler crafting beads and buttons in this basket, I would agree. Buttons are not beads, y'all. Come on. Just the same, Benita. I think it was a good idea to ask our citizens to keep their eyes peeled. It seems likely that restoring the missing bead to its original slot on the abacus would resolve the town's broken graduations. Yeah, I would be pretty proud of us for fixing that problem. Ooh, calendar alert from Count Thangula. Proceed to the parking lot for your one o'clock meeting. Bleh! Ugh, he is so organized. Well, Roddy, thanks for the chat, but I've got to scoot. It's time for an unpleasant conversation. Benita, do not leave without sustenance. Here, take this old fig gruesome. Mmm... Nice to meet you, Alfonso the Troll. We were just admiring your extensive doll collection. We really like the ones with red hair. These are my friends I talk to, because nobody ever visits Alfonso. I'm sorry to hear that, Alfonso. Will you talk to Alfonso? We can, but we're looking for a cave belonging to a certain robot. Do you know where to find this cave? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, sounds like you do. I bet you can tell us where it is. How about have a tea party with our fun so we see we his friends? <laughs> and I'll tell you about the cave. Well, that sounds fair. Say no, and I'll eat you. No, we'll do it. That's fine. Okay then, pick you a baby doll and have a seat. Do you want some more frogs on your plate? Thank you, Alfonso, for this lovely tea party spread. Well, don't be rude, Albert. Introduce me to your guest. Well, my baby doll is a cherubic young woman who seems to be full of spiders. Her name is Miss Susan. She likes the radio and eating worms. And my guest for this evening is a young man in a cowboy outfit with eyes that follow you. Mr. Body, he also likes the radio, and their brother and sister. 
Okay, and what's your doll's name? This is Miss Madam. Madam? Well, now that I get a better look at this ominous grove in the middle of nowhere, I can really appreciate what you've done with the place. Oh, sure. I'm very taken with a bucket of flies and old TV sets, which I don't know how they got here, but looks nice. <sighs> Boring. Albert, we need to pick this up if we want to know anything about that cave. What can we do to liven up this tea party? I don't know. Uh, do the doll's voice. I can talk to him. Miss Madam, would you like some more caterpillar? I bet she does. I mean, I want some ice cream. <laughs> she wants ice cream? Yeah. How about Mr. Potty? Sure he wants ice cream. I mean... Where's my ice cream? <laughs> he said that. You might him say that. He said that himself. Uh, what's that? I think Miss Madam is trying to say something. Um, I, I said it's time for my ice cream. <laughs> no ice cream if you don't finish your dinner, Miss Madam. I didn't know you was talking to get to my friends. Miss Madam, Miss Madam. Chip, I think it's going pretty good. Uh, yeah, he's having a real good time. Hey, yo, what's this? I put a napkin on my head. <laughs> oh, well, oh, oh, you are <laughs> I'll put my napkin on my head. Hold on, Miss Potter, I'm gonna tell me something. Here, yeah, hold on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She said, can you talk about palm cones? Albert, what is your current thinking on palm cones? Oh, I saw a mighty handsome pine cone on the way here. I bet you can find it if you look real hard. Oh, that's interesting. Tell me. It's okay, Alfonso. We're having a wonderful time. It's a great conversation. <laughs> sure. Well now, here's my one o'clock right on the dot. Caretaker Benita Von Wingelamp. Welcome to Hatch City, which is also City Jail. I am here to escort you to your interview with Prisoner 001, one Belford Batsinger. Hey, Sheriff. Uh, you've got a lot going on in here. Marco, you shake the top of the machine while I cram my arm in here and try to touch a bag. Whatever. Say when, zombie friend. Casey, Marco, y'all leave my vending machines alone. What's wrong with y'all? We're acting out for attention, man. All right now, hang on a minute and I'll come play b-ball with y'all in the parking lot. I didn't bring my gym clothes. I can't change out. Well, you wearing tennis shoes, you be fine. So are Casey and Marco just hanging out at the jail because their friend works here now? Yeah, pretty much. A good company. Come on, let's walk on back. You're going to have to squeeze in through the sales counter here. we got a lot of new rickrack in here. Yeah, so this hat sales counter was not here last week, Sheriff. Is this what it looks like? Well, what does it look like? It looks like you have installed Batsinger's henchmen, Apple Bob and Ring Toss, as hat salespeople in what must be a bizarre work release program. Hey, lady, you want to buy a hat? Here yeah, we got some lovely looks for the winter. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Boop. Are you booping my nose, Sheriff? Yeah, because you got it on the nose. These two here, while they was arrested with old Belfer Batsinger for slime crimes, have done such a good job with Deputy Terry's Litter Busters program that I got the idea that they could be free and learn how to make and sell hats. Because we got all these hats around here. And next time. You know, this seems like a really constructive activity for you two, and I wish you worlds of success. I really do. Uh, one question real quick, Sheriff. Do you think it's possible that these two might use their new freedom to somehow break Batsinger out of jail or scheme with him somehow? Now it did cross my mind, Madam Caretaker, it did. But they don't seem to want to go back there and see Belfry at all. He hurt our feelings. That's right. Good riddance. <laughs> well, okay then. I will buy one small hat, please. 
And now it's time to go see Batsinger. Hey, Terry, I'm here to see Batsinger. How are you today? I'm good, ma'am. That hat looks like a mama bird left her babies on your head. Sure does. I think Apple Bob and Ring Toss are still practicing. Hey, Flapway, you got a visitor. Now y'all get over here and start jawing so I can do my Sudoku in peace. Well, now, now. But isn't the lovely Benita Von Wingenkamp looking like she just stepped out of a luxury box at the Derby. Hello, Belfry. I'm here to make my weekly mandated welfare check on, quote, those awaiting trials that have been delayed due to unforeseen circumstances, end quote, as outlined in the Curdle Codex B049J dash picture of a guillotine. I welcome you, ma'am. I got a spring in my step today, for you see, today, I walk out of here a free man. Is that so? Yes, ma'am. For my recollection, there's a scroll outlining cases for exception wherein a citizen awaiting trial, particularly an innocent lamb like yours truly, can be released if the extradition places, quote, undue burden on the citizen. And I would argue that it does. Jailing me up like this in this old hat shop without the slightest knowledge of when the elsewhere councils will show up and take me away, that is undue burden. Nice try. I've read that scroll, and there are four types of undue burden outlined in the law. Troll curses, vampire sunlight issues, werewolf moon issues, and witch transmutation. And none of those applies to you. What else you got? Well, how about this? Codex J Alpha 5.3 tilde permits me one daily item from the vending machine that, quote, is to be paid out of the budget of the sheriff's office. Mmm, no. That codicil only applies to those with... Quote, established health conditions such as zombie rot that require hourly eating to quell the madness, end quote. I could do this all day. Except no, actually I can't. I have a 2.30 meeting that I have to get to because I'm caretaker of the town and you're not anymore, so... <laughs> oh, Bonita, darling, you are just sharper than a steel trap. I'm so proud of how you're doing keeping my seat warm as town caretaker. Ugh. Don't know about that, Batsinger. I don't see any evil cosmic slime around for you to try to make a power play with. <gasps> but you know what? I do see this old pin cushion. Here you go. Maybe you two can form an alliance. Now, since I've made my rounds and I'm uploading the checklist log to my Google Drive, I'm just going to be on my way and... Well, now, hold on, Miss Von Wingenkamp. Me and my pin cushion have something we do want to ask you about. Something important. All fun and aside. What's this now? I heard you unearthed a diary, a long-lost diary belonging to my father. You heard about the Roostifer Batsinger diary? Ugh, the sheriff has such a big mouth. Yes, I heard him on the phone with his wife Velma talking all about it. I heard the diary details a confession about how my father stole a bead from the Abacus of Fate, and that there is a substantial amount of the diary that you cannot read because it's in old Halloweenish. Okay, well, I am very surprised that the sheriff retained all of that information long enough to come here and blab to everybody about it, but yes, what of it? I just want to let you know, darling, that I would love to help you all if you want to start translating that old diary. I do speak and read several dialects of old Halloweenish on account of my long and storied history with the town. I see, and what would you like in return for this help? Nothing but a sense of closure. To put a lid on this whole affair, so to speak. You see, my father, Roostifer, disappeared from the town when I was a pup. I never knew what become of him, or why he left his only son alone in this cold world. Yeah, he left his only son with a bunch of ill-gotten wealth and a path to rule the town. Very sad. I never knew you were so sentimental, Belfry. Well, now, if it would put your mind at ease, Benita, I would also allow you to provide me with a few creature comforts for my assistance. I would love to get out and fan my wings a bit, and perhaps enjoy a nice meal or two. Well, I will consider your offer, Belfry. Oh, an alert from Count Fangula. I have your lunch order in the car. You can eat en route to your next meeting. Busy day. I gotta go. I have also brought a large bin, so you do not spill salad dressing in your décolletage again. Okay, that was embarrassing. Ignore that. I'm still very cool and busy. Bye.
Today I learned that nobody throws a tea party like Alfonso the Troll. It was lovely. This map to the Crystal Cave is very detailed, Alfonso. He's even got a little robot there standing outside the cave. He goes, boop, 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 boop. You sure you won't come with us, Alfonso? I can't. But please take Mr. Buddy and Miss Susie. I would have to see the world. Oh, oh I'm no, not sure about... Can't. Your bad friends. And they remind you of Tea Party. Okay, Alfonso. They're in good hands. And we'll be sure to tell the rock people that you're out here, okay? You need to make some new friends. Oh, I like that. Who no. I'm breaking some supplies. Albert, I think we're getting a bag of pine cones. I also predict pine cones. Albert, how deep is this cave supposed to go? I don't know, Chip. Alfonso was unclear. I'd say it's a couple more feet, or maybe it never stops. Okay, it's just our backpack's pretty heavy now that I'm carrying these dolls around with us. Now, Chip, we talked about that. I said to leave the dolls with Julie in the cart, but you insisted because they, they might, might get, lonely. get lonely. I know. Besides, wait a minute. There it is, Chip, do you hear? The crystal. For sure it's the crystal. Let me get out of this backpack and I'll help you look for it. I think it's behind the wall. You can tell by all the purple light spilling out of this hole at the bottom here. Ah, that opening's almost big enough we could crawl right through there and grab the crystal. I could almost fit. I just... Maybe if I try real hard, or unhinge some of my ghost bones, or transform a little bit. I've just been eating too many Albert. health bars. I'm Albert! Chip, you got an idea? Oh, look! What is going on with our backpack? Oh, well, it seems to be bulging and undulating, and now it's being unzipped from the inside by some very tiny hands, and... stuffy in there. Oh my, it's the baby dolls from Alfonso's tea party. Mr. Buddy, is that you? Well, sure it is, Chip. And you know Susan, she's my big sis. Huh? <laughs> okay, but why didn't you tell anybody that you two were alive this whole time? We were sleeping, but we still want to help. If you'll let us. Oh, uh, well, uh, you think you can fit your little baby doll body through that opening and help us grab a magic crystal on the other side? Sure we can. Here we go. Rochester, Minerva, you should have seen Belfry Batsinger trying to bargain for vending machine snacks. He was like, Codex do to do I believe. And I was just like, no. And I knew all the laws because Count Fangula made me those flashcards. Well, that is just splendid, Benita. I wish I could say that we had a productive afternoon in your absence. Yeah, Pumpkin has been driving us all batty. Excuse you. I've been being a business. Yeah, so what's going on around here? And why does it involve so much clinking? Pumpkin wanted to update your sales software so the boutique could accept cryptocurrency. So, not an expert, but that sounds like a computery thing to do and not a loud hammering thing to do. It was pretty straightforward. I had you all configured in about 90 seconds. That's because you're a genius, Minerva. You despitious daffodil. Roddy, you putrefied brute. Pumpkin, are you hammering on the abacus of fate? Stop that. Not on it, just besides it. Ugh. Anyway, speaking of the abacus of fate, 
Did I tell you that Batsinger was very interested in Roostifer's confession diary? He offered to translate all the parts in it that are in old Halloweenish, And I'm thinking, what's in it for him, you know? I too would be wary of accepting his help. But it is indeed true, Benita. What he told you of his father's disappearance. Roostifer Batsinger vanished without a trace. Do you think he vanished with the stolen bead from the Abacus of Fate? If that's true, we may never get that thing back. Perhaps he did. But perhaps he secreted the bead somewhere. Perhaps he had other pressing reasons to leave town. And perhaps Belfry's assistance in translating the diary could illuminate those reasons. Yeah, maybe so. Ugh, that would be my least favorite thing in the world. Isn't there anyone else in town who can read Old Halloweenish? Like a non-annoying wizard. Okay, y'all come look at my new cash register I built. You definitely made some interesting engineering decisions. It's pretty enormous, Pumpkin. Is this for cryptocurrency? Why, this monstrosity would hold ten large urns of candelabra. I just need some finishing touches. It needs a big old button. Pumpkin, get those pliers away from the Abacus of Fate. You may not use those beads for your big old button. Well, let me just check the measuring real quick. Pumpkin, you are stressing me out. I'll put it right back. Hey, watch it, buddy. Please I don't know if that's a good idea. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Oops. Oh, crap. Hey, you guys, how's it going in there? Do you see the crystal? Yeah, but we gotta climb for it. Yeah, we gotta climb, mister. I don't think we have a lot of time here, Chip. Albert, yeah, don't worry. I'm sure Sassafax the evil robot will totally understand why we're in his cave trying to steal his favorite treasure. Okay, that's funny, but it's also kind of stressful. Say, you guys got a radio? Uh, we do have a radio. Do you and Miss Susan like the radio? Sure we do. We never miss our favorite radio program. It actually comes on real soon. It has far out music and a cool ladies on it. Oh, that's cool. Uh, sounds interesting. I didn't know you could get radio way out here in the Forbidden Forest. Yeah, all the TVs went out after the explosion, but we got radio and we love it. Okay, well, I don't want to pressure you or anything. You've been very helpful so far. But, remember Evil Robot? Loves that crystal, have to be quick, quick, quick? We remember. Uh, we are doing it. It's Sassafax, the Evil Robot. Hey y'all, we found the crystal. It's so pretty. It's beautiful. A real treat for the eyes. Excellent work. Now come on out before that robot finishes sending that fax. Hey, can you guys hear me? What's going on? Are you okay in there? We want to come out. Only, we were talking and... Well... What? What, what, what? You have to promise to take us with you. I don't know, Chip. We don't know anything about Mr. Buddy or Miss Susan. You two come out, and we'll talk about it, okay? It sounds like a pretty big baby. Albert, what if I reach in that hole and just yank him right out of there? Maybe we should just put this crystal back on the shelf. Yeah, maybe that robot needs that crystal. Chip, we have to get that crystal. Okay, okay. We talked it over. You can come with us. Are you sure? Yes, we're sure. Catawombus! Did they say catawombus? It means we're excited. Guys, the robot's here. I'm pulling you out. Huh? Whoa.
All right now, Bonita, I got your voice memo, and it seems like y'all are dealing with a little problem here. So I brought these nets and a bunch of gloves and some coveralls. Thanks for coming over so quick, Sheriff, but I don't know if nets are going to help. Well, you said you was dealing with some bee ghosts, so I reckon... Bead ghosts. Now, when there's a bee near you, Miss Von Wangenkamp, the trick is you gotta stand perfectly still. They gonna move on. Not bee like bzz, Sheriff. Bead, like on a necklace, bead ghosts, because Pumpkin took a bead off the Abacus of Fate and it won't go back on, and all these ghosts came out of nowhere. Look. <laughs> Sheriff Taylorbug, they won't leave me alone. <laughs> Dang, Pumpkin, them ghosts is all over you. Hold my hand. Yeah, and they also shriek like that every time Pumpkin says anything. But has that fact stopped him from talking? No, it has not. Hang on. Me and my ghost gotta go to the bathroom. I'm sorry I called you in such a tizzy, Sheriff. I think we just need to figure out how to put the bead back on the abacus of fate. Then hopefully the ghosts will just go away. I believe these ghosts are ancient defenders of the abacus of fate. Does the diary say that? Oh yeah, duh. Rochester, I forgot you know old Halloweenish. I know it, though I regretfully am not fluent. But look at this page. Here is how I manipulated the magical bead mechanism. And then a bunch of stuff that I can't read. Translating, it says hold the bead touching the... I don't know that word. Whilst pressing downwardly on the... Two more words I don't know. Oh dear. I don't know if I can be of much help. But this is good, right? The bead that Pumpkin took off won't go back on, but it's because we don't know how to make it pop open. But if we translate those words, then surely we can figure out how to put the bead back on and fix this whole dumb situation. Hey, yo! What are you doing? You okay? Peter, I was just thinking. If these ghosts appear from the ether to bedevil the soul who removes a bead from the abacus, then it is no wonder that Roostopher Batsinger disappeared after he took the fateful missing bead. Yeah, all that ghost yelling would get tiresome pretty fast, I think. Mama, are you gonna fix my sad problem? Not your mother, but yes. Come on, everyone. Chip, tell my sister it's my turn to hold the sacred crystal. Miss Susan, it's Buddy's turn to hold the sacred crystal. We're playing Mama and Baby, and Julie thinks it's her bottle. You know what? It might be Albert's turn to hold the sacred crystal. Oh. Here, play with the sword. Okay. Thanks. The rock people are going to flip when they see this thing, Albert. They probably use it to talk to an elder stone on their home planet. Or maybe they play baby with it. I don't know. We're going to find out real soon, Chip. That's our bridge. Straight ahead. I see that. And it looks like the rock people already have company. This is a hard question. On the surface, we always obey council agents, such as Agent Stye and Agent Squint. Of course, dear sir. And we are grateful. Come on with this guy. But we have made covenant with the Halloween people. They have returned our sacred crystal and proven themselves friends of the rock people. We must now debate. We await your judgment. They caused the event! So keep that in mind! We would never seek to harm anyone or any other town in the ne'er-do-well, and I think you know that. It doesn't matter. So why are you trying to arrest us all the time and hurt our feelings? Because as long as there is no communication between the towns and the council, then my agents have all the power. We already control Father's Day town. In time, we'll have all the holidays. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, maybe your eyeball's bigger than your stomach. The quorum has reached a consensus. The Halloweens are true friends of the rock people. 
They may cross our gemstone bridge, and we will protect their passage. Thank you, my stony friends. You stones have made a powerful enemy this day. Now we are delayed! If you need to reach us, we'll be on the other side of the bridge, telling the council what big jerks you are. So just shake your fist in the air when we're on the other side, and we'll know you wish us all the best. Agent Squint, I am experiencing anxiety. As am I! Here, Benita, darling, you look like you need this. Goliath makes the best mold fashions, don't you, Goliath? <laughs> Thanks, Goliath. Count Fangula, do you think it's irresponsible of me to indulge in a little afternoon cocktail? I've had a really long day. You are not required to drive or make any speeches, Madam Caretaker. So I give you my blessing. Somebody come over here and show me how to use this big old wicker player. Ah, an old grandma bone. My grand count used to have one of these in his parlor. It is wonderfully vintage. Okay, we gonna put on this song. Bonita, you were telling me of your woes in translating old Halloweenish in an effort to remove the wretched curse of the bead ghosts from your fabulous friend Pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, like I said, Google Translate gave me nothing but nonsense and Rochester almost had it but he doesn't know three words and we went to the library and Mimi said all the books on Old Halloweenish were checked out to some wizard who took them to another dimension so we can't recall them and then I went to Henry Vex's weird house and his universal translator broke and started sparking and Pumpkin said in gum somehow. I don't even know where that happened so look out Fangula, I'm dancing like a grand count. And that ghost shrieking has been the soundtrack of the entire day. Ask me how much I've enjoyed that. Gracious Benita, my pompadour is turning white and just imagining your day. <laughs> Yours too, huh, Goliath? So, as you can probably guess, I was going to ask you if you could translate the passage. I have the diary right here, along with the Abacus of Fate. And here is the bead that Pumpkin removed. Oh well, that explains the large plastic tote you brought in, doesn't it? I thought for a moment it was move-in day at the sorority house. Let me see the passage. Here. It says, hold the bead touching the, I want to say poles, as in the home of Earth's Kris Kringle, so you would hold the top and the bottom of the bead, pressing downwardly on the, well, Here's your problem, Benita. These two words. They aren't in Old Halloweenish. They're not? This is Wingzings, a pictogram typeface. Only he's drawn it by hand. It was invented by Roost of a Batsinger for family documents and for use in their dreadful annual family update e newsletter. Mr. Goliath, there is one man in town I'm thinking of hanging over at Hat City in a jail cell. And man, I do not want to be thinking of him. Belfry Batsinger, of course. Disgraced former caretaker who consorted with a cosmic slime. So, being a Batsinger, he would probably know those two words. The ones in Wingsings. He is the only Batsinger left in town. He is the only man in town who possibly could. Uh... And I didn't mean to take it off. And I tried to put it back on, but can't nobody figure it out. Because we can't read the destructions at old Halloweenies. And then Mama said to come here and show you my sad state of affairs. Thank you, Pumpkin. So that's the deal, Belfry. I promise you nothing for your help. But if you have an ounce of compassion in your cavernous bat heart, you will tell us what those two words are and end this terrible curse that plagues this pitiful pumpkin. Benita, darling, we've been drinking. 
maybe a little, and I forgot to eat dinner, so I'm in a great mood. Now, what do you say? Here is your father's diary. These are the two words we don't know in wingsing. It says, hold the bead touching the poles while pressing downwardly on the blank and blank. Well, now, let me see here. Uh, let me put on my spec text. Here, Pumpkin, you hold the bead touching the two poles. Okay. Are you going to tell us them words, Batman? While pressing downwardly on the... I believe that was the numeral 17. Uh, let me just tick up some tally marks here. Y'all have a blood fountain pen I can borrow? Belfry. The numeral 17 and the 9. Aha! Put it back on the abacus now, Pumpkin. I just want to say bye to my ghost real quick. Y'all, I had a real fun day. Okay, but we're going to have fun. All right, Batsinger, since you operated in good faith, then I will too. I have a copy of town form BO49J.5 picture of a snowflake on the exchanging of service for special consideration for incarcerated individuals. So if these terms seem amenable to you, then I would be happy to allow you to help continue the translation of Roostifer's diary. Oh, well, now I'm just going to need to review the terms and see if I find them acceptable. You know, there's a lot of little bullets I'd like to review with my counsel. Sure, take as long as you need. Just remember, we'll need to sign in the presence of a notary. So be ready, Apple Bob. Yeah, <laughs> ready. Now hat me, ring toss. Coming at ya! <laughs> a perfect arc. Let's go home, boys. Right behind you, Madam Caretaker. You know, Rintos's millinery skills are rapidly improving. Them ghosts may be hungry. Can we stop at Colonel Cadaver's Pizza on the way home? Yes. Yes, we can. Mr. Thorne, are you feeling well? You look rather different. Yeah, Mr. Thorne. I remember you not being quite so enormous and peaceful. I have put down my roots and joined mine with the trees of this forest. That's what you meant when you said you would commune with the flora. Indeed. I have already learned of those that dwell just beyond the forest edge. You are near the council. You must have learned all this through the mycorrhizal network. Uh, of course. It's a network of underground fungal threads that connect millions of trees in the forest. Like a tree ethernet. Uh, a tree ethernet. In this way, I am one with all trees and creatures, even the tiny ones who clamber among my limbs. You got some bushy eyebrows, mister. Okay, guys. Please just get your frisbee out of Mr. Thorne's branches and come back down. Hey, where's that radio you were going on about? It's almost time for our program. Don't touch anything in the cart till I get over there. Last one to the cart, We must be on our way, Mr. Thorne. Return to me when you need assistance. I am cultivating incredible abilities. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. I think we'll see you soon. You're doing great, Julie. Our MVP, as usual. How do we look, Chip? Are we still on the right path to find the Elsewhere Council? Albert, the sparkles have never been clearer. I wouldn't be surprised if we ran right into the front door before the night's over. Then what should we do until then? I could sing a song! No! Radio! Look at the mood! It's time for our program! Alright, go ahead and dial it in. I want to hear this cool lady or whatever it is you said earlier. Yay! I'm so excited! Hurry, we're gonna miss the beginning! Hello, baby! Yay! Yay! Turn it up! What? That can't be. It's Fibula, baby. The lady! What is happening? Okay, baby, it's time for my program. Okay, listen up, babies. Everything had a lot of exciting developments in the world. Pointy vendor cabins been up to...